This video builds on my intro to inductors video, so make sure you watch that one first. Alright, what is the inductance value of an inductor? Inductance is measured in Henry's. The higher the inductance value, the more the inductor will resist sudden changes in current. Now I'd like to give you some sense of scale here for various inductance values. Inductors with inductances in the low nanohenry range will only filter out really high frequency signals, like 100 MHz and above. So they tend to be used in radio frequency circuits, like in this old boombox from the 80s. You can see that it's literally just a couple of turns of wire with some glue to hold them in place. Nowadays, tiny inductors look just like any other surface mount component on a circuit board, making them a little harder to identify. Inductors in the microhenry range filter out frequencies from about 50 kHz to a few MHz and beyond. They're typically used in DC power supplies to smooth out the voltage. The inductor on the right is shielded, so its magnetic field won't interfere with other components nearby. When you get into the millihenry range, that's a fair amount of inductance. You encounter them in really heavy power filters, like this 5 millihenry inductor I was using in my previous video. Audio crossover circuits also tend to use inductors in the millihenry range to separate low and high frequency sounds. Generally speaking, the more turns of wire in the coil, the higher the inductance. But the inductance value will also depend on things like the length and width of the inductor. So Google around for coil inductance calculators, or make your life easier and just buy inductors of a known value. Now you often see inductors made out of coils of wire wrapped around a ferromagnetic material, like iron or ferrite. We call this the inductor's core, and what ferromagnetism means is that the core helps to enhance the magnetic field, which means you get more energy stored with the same coil for the same current. Here's an example where I made an air core inductor that just happened to have an inductance of 5.5 microhenries. Now watch what happens when I put a ferrite core in the center of the inductor. The ferromagnetic effect helps to create a stronger magnetic field, so more energy can be stored, so the inductance value jumped up to 42 microhenries. The gadget I'm using to measure inductance here is called an LCR meter, and unfortunately good ones don't come cheap. If I find a nice one for you guys, I'll put it in the video description section. Alright, now let's do a visual example of what different inductances will do to a waveform. Here I am feeding a 200 kHz square wave through the 5 microhenry coil, then into a 20 ohm resistive load. And here's what the current going through the circuit looks like. The inductor impedes the sudden changes just a little bit. When I add the ferrite core, increasing the inductance to 42 microhenries, now there's a lot more filtering. Alright, finally let's see what happens when you combine inductors together. When you put inductors in series, the total inductance value is just the sum of all the inductances. Intuitively, this makes sense. If the inductance value of an inductor is based on the number of turns in the coil, then putting more turns in series will increase the inductance. When you put inductors in parallel, the overall inductance goes down according to this equation. You'll notice that these equations are exactly the same as the ones for series and parallel resistors. Very handy. Okay, so now you know something about Henry's, check out this next video about low-pass filters that you can make with an inductor.